everyone, and welcome back to Outer Wilds. This is episode nine. Last time, we discovered something very interesting at the core of the interloper, the ruptured core, uh, which seems to be uh, the source of the ghost matter, potentially. It's kind of reading about it, how this exotic matter, uh, once it ruptures, would essentially blanket the solar system almost instantaneously. And while it hasn't, you know, coated it everywhere, it seems that it came from here. It's because the interlope is full of ghost matter as well. It was a very cool discovery. Uh, there's definitely more for us to check out there. There's more for us to, more for us to check out everywhere. Um, luckily, the game is paused while I'm reading the ship log right now uh, because we have we have a lot of loose ends. We've kind of been dipping our toes in things for a little while now and trying to focus on on some things. Um, for example, we have to recreate or do the experiment uh, on the... Uh, not the sun station, but at one of these has to do with the high energy lab. There you go. The high energy lab. Uh, we have to recreate the experiment in there very early on into the cycle so it doesn't get drowned out in sand. Uh, we still have to discover the Ash Twin project uh, itself. So that's something that we're probably going to try and do immediately. We're going to fly over to uh, the Hourglass Twins and go to the High Energy Lab, which does give us a, a nice shortcut uh, to the Sunless City as well. So when you get in there, there's a door that goes straight there, which is nice. Um, we have to go back to the Sun Station because there's definitely still more to explore there, as the game tells us. We we did a decent, you know, thing there, but we need to get there <laughs> much earlier. Again, that's something you have to do really early on because the Sun Station keeps collapsing into <laughs> the Sun. Uh, we have to find the third escape pod in Dark Bramble. We've got to find the vessel in Dark Bramble. Um, Angler fish fossil is still a question mark. There's there's a bunch. There's a bunch. There's, still, there's the quantum moon, and I think I've been making a mistake with the quantum moon as well. I've, I think I've been recalling uh, the rule of, uh, of this one uh, incorrectly, unfortunately. I've been recalling this one incorrectly. Um, so we gotta, we have to go through this once again. I think I've, I have every, all of the pieces. I just need to put it together properly. So, uh, recalling the rule of quantum imaging, uh, a mural of a tower on an island, quantum entanglement, a mural of a quantum shard in a cave, and the rule of the sixth location next to a mural of a tower um, hanging above a black hole. Uh, what's cool about this is uh, I, I had like a misinterpreting a misinterpretation of this text, right? Is that for some reason I thought it would update over time saying you have recalled when I would learn the other ones because the first one obviously says you have recalled the rule of quantum imaging and the other ones just said to recall them. But I think what that means is obviously if you're in the quantum shrine reading that, obviously if you're reading it, you have recalled it. You know what I mean? So it's kind of written that way. For some reason, I thought it would like retroactively update the text. Uh, but there you go. So the rule of the sixth location is learned in the uh, Tower of Quantum Knowledge. Uh, I think I might have been mixing up my south and north poles or just doing it incorrectly. So I'm going to play around with that as well so we can figure out the quantum moon uh, puzzle scenario properly. Uh, I also need to check out the lake bed cave and there's another quantum signal which is apparently coming from somewhere on Timber Hearth, which is strange because I'm pretty sure it's the museum shard, but it's... Oh, there's another one. Okay. There's another one that's 293 meters away. Um, okay. Hang on. There is another shard. Um, and another thing that's really nice is uh, at the end of last episode, we um, acquired the... Oh, I didn't realize there was a graveyard here. That's kind of grim. Uh, hold on a sec. Um, I think this pauses. No, it doesn't pause. Hold on. Let me pause the game. Uh, we learned how to meditate until the next loop, at least. 
So you can like explore something really early on. And then if you've missed like a window of opportunity, for example, which we probably have by now with the sun station, because you have to get there really quick, you can just meditate. Doesn't count as a death, which is nice. Just a bit of calm relaxation. Uh, and then we'll do the next loop. Um, here lies Sean Ariamaki Ridinger. Here lies Ice River. Beautiful pronunciations by me. Binary Semaphore. I'm not sure what this is, and if this feels kind of like a real life thing. Similar to how it looks like, I think, when we were reading some credits, and it seems like there were some real people names. So I think that might be maybe some special thanks or a dedication to some people. Um, that would make sense to me. Uh, we're going to go find this unknown shard. I'm not sure where it is, and it might have just been smarter to take the ship. For some reason, I just was just like, oh yeah, this might not be too far away. Um, but I'm struggling to get up here now. So I might just have to take I might have to take the ship. Oh, it's been a while since we've heard the, t the, the Timber Hearth music, actually. That's nice. It's such a nice uh, piece of music. And it's gone. <laughs> and it's gone. Like all good things in life, it's gone. All right. Uh, we also still have to solve the mystery of, I believe, the, like the radio tower and the uh, the satellite is is still a thing. Ouch! For us to do. It was a grove shard. Okay, I don't even think I've been in the grove then. Um, I, I don't think I've been in the grove. God, it's already night time. It moves quick. Okay. Oh, right. The geyser moves as well. That's, that's kind of weird. The geyser and this pool, uh, these stepping stones move as well if I turn around. Go down here. Yeah. Oh. I wonder if this is going to take us to a location that we've already been in, though. Uh, I wonder if this will take us somewhere that we've already been, because we've kind of been in this under Timber Hearth already. This could potentially be a new area. I'm not, I'm not sure. Only one way to find out. randomly sucked into an area. Yes, I've been here because this is where you learn that we were fish and now we have to pay bills. All right, cool. Nice. Uh, I'm going to meditate until the next loop. <laughs> while I'm getting shot up in the <laughs> perfect place to meditate. While you're getting shot up in the into space on a geyser. Now, I'm, I'm in the camp that meditating until a loop does not count as a death. You are willingly pressing a reset button and, and doing it calmly with meditation. That's what I think. All right. Let's go do some of the, the, the more time sensitive thing right away. We're going to go to the sun station before it collapses into the sun. I wonder if we'll be able to escape the sun station before it falls into the sun. Um, and then Uh, maybe we could be lucky, and maybe we could get to the high energy lab as well before that experiment has drowned and we can recreate it. If not, we'll have to do it another time. Now, I wish that we could land on this. I really do. But I just feel like it's, it's fucking impossible. I feel like I'm just going to die immediately. I feel like I'm getting sucked into the sun right Yeah, I'm, Oh my god. <laughs> I was like, I feel like I'm just going to die right now. This is, this is not good. <laughs> And the unfortunate thing about matching velocity with the sun doesn't work for too long because you're just slowly getting sucked into it anyway. Like you could potentially line up the orbit, which would be great, but fuck me, is it hard? And I think the only reason why it's so hard is because you can't um, 
match your velocity or autopilot to the sun station, which is kind of unfortunate. But we are going to land on this. On our Sandy Ash Twin. Where I'm... I did autopilot on the wrong planet, so... Okay. The sand hasn't started draining yet, so we're good. And it's one of these two towers. No, it's not. Those are the satellite dishes. It's, I can't remember where the sun one is specifically, but there you go. The sun has started draining. The sun has started draining? The sand has started draining. I forgot about this. Oh! Oh, this is so much easier if you just run it as the sand is going down. I did it the hard way. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Holy shit. As you run through it, when the sand is going down, that is just so much easier. Like, holy crap, you just run across it. I am going to just say that I am proud of myself of floating through it the hard way. There you go. And now we wait ever so patiently for us to line up with the sun station. There it is. We are close to coming into contact and then... BAM! Alright, now we're in the sun town. Uh, probably as fast as we could. Right, let's be quick now six minutes now we got here when we were at uh, eight minutes last time so we got a whole two extra minutes I think okay uh, don't get smacked oh god oh shit all right that's good that's good there we go okay now uh, panic mode because what the fuck were we doing when we got into here last time uh, we were Oh, fuck, I need to remember what we did here last time. We went up here. So I was looking for scrolls. We got a, we got a statue. This is where we learnt about everything fucking happening. Can we get up to the top there, maybe? We want to check out the destroyed stuff there. Oh, man, I'm, I'm already panicking. I feel the time pressure. Okay, um... It's not what I... <laughs> get, 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 get away. Alright. Um, now, science calls us to explode the sun. We did this, and we read this. Just need to double check. Possible to prompt the sun to explode. Kindly refrain from going supernova on me before the sun does. Now, uh, can we go down here? Or is this just going to be like death. Okay, we can walk down here. Oh no, there's another room. Nice. Okay, so we didn't get to check this out last time. I'm just going to pause because we do not have time. Uh, we didn't get to make it here last time because we exploded into the sun. We're probably going to have to make another journey here. I feel like every second is precious. Oh, I'm just going to pause it. So I <laughs> just, I'm going to pause it because we're on a time loop. Okay. Um, we have a Namai. And this is really cool because this is a, a mural painting image of them uh, without them wearing helmets and they look exactly like their statues. Who would have guessed? Now, this is a mural that showcases the sun and the, and the eye in balance, which is interesting. Okay, they're balanced on the scales. This is terrifying, okay. Ash Twin Projection Stone. Nice. Um, star has reached end of natural life cycle. Oh, it's already reached its end of natural life cycle. Warning, evacuate Sun Station. Approximate time until Sun Station is destroyed by expanding star. 3 minutes 17 seconds until the star's death. 14 minutes 47 seconds. Nice, it actually counts us down. That's awesome. What happened? Did the Sun Station not fire? 
It fired Yari, but it failed. The sun barely responded. There were infin infinitely infin infinitesimally small surface level changes, but they were barely visible even to the third eye. The sun station is useless. It will never and could never cause the sun to explode. I don't know what comes next, my friends. I suppose we must start over, but I'm unsure how to start over. Return to Ash Twin first, my friend. Perhaps a change of task would help. Spire noticed a comet approaching this star system that we'd like to investigate. Pi, I hurt for you, my friends. We all know how hard you've both worked. I can only offer my compassion. How are you? How is Idea? We're well, Yarrow, or as well as expected given the circumstances, though disappointed. I may have disagreed with exploding the sun, but I never wished the device would fail. I'd hoped our terrible work was finished. Shit. Okay, so we've we've got the the reveal that the sun is nearing the end of its natural life cycle anyway. The sun station actually failed. They tried, but it failed. And then potentially, as a result, this time loop might be being caused by the Namai constantly trying to like see if they can get the sun station to work. Maybe. And that's what the Ash Twin project is? I don't know. Okay. Um, that's updated the ship log. That gives us something. Let's put it in here. Okay, again, we're in here. Again, we are in here. Oh. There's something there that we can kind of see off to the side. That's interesting. Um... Now we've seen that room before. Is that all for us to discover? I guess we have to wait until we're on the ship to check the ship log. Do you reckon I could get out? Do you reckon I could get out of here? <clears throat> before the sun station explodes? Can we make it back to the teleportation thing? Yeah! <laughs> Can I make it back? Can we get warped? Oh, I made it with perfect time. Nice. Holy shit, we actually made it. Like, right on time, too. Where's my ship, though? That's the true question. It's currently... Ah, oh, I can get sucked up through this sand, can't I? Take me to my ship. Oh shit, oh shit, I... Oh shit, am I still in it? Oh fuck. Holy fuck, this is actually kind of working. Oh no, it's no longer working! It's no longer way it was working! Come on, come on, come on. Take me from my ship. Yeah, dude. Alright. Ah, ow. I hurt so bad. Quickly before the sand comes, get me into my fucking ship! Ah. <laughs> Now that was fucking amazing. Heal me. Get me the hell out of here. Buckle up. I'm being pushed into the sand. Holy crap. We did it. We actually did it. We made it to the fucking sun station and back and got back to our ship. That's magic, baby. That's magic. All right. Let's do the quantum moon because I feel like we have to wait till the next loop to do um, the high energy lab and the sunless city. So we're going to uh, get the quantum moon to appear for us. There it is. A, a orbiting Ash Twin and it's disappeared because it's just gone behind them. Oh, no, it's still there. It's still there. Okay. All right. We have a we have a uh, a reveal. There you go. The sun station was created for the purpose of blowing up the sun. However, it failed. The sun is just nearing its uh, the end of its natural life cycle, apparently, which is uh, which is crazy to me. Now let's figure out this uh, this quantum moon. All right, let's figure this out. Uh, let's remember to take a photo of it so I can land on it. Perfect. All right, let's figure this shit out. Now, I think we 
this is the now this is this is the problem with the quantum moon is when we change locations our ship disappears as far as i'm aware i've tried twice the ship market you can't see it on the map anymore it disappears um which is kind of unfortunate i don't know if you have to come back to maybe the location you were at before and maybe it'll be back but i think the the quantum moon is like a point of no return for the ship is this mine ah it is mine nice it landed right it's probably <laughs> I love it. All right. Um, there's our scout launcher. Cool. Um, oh, and this was a thing I wanted to try with the scout launcher as well, is I wanted to have it in a different spot. So we're on the south pole right now. I think I was getting it wrong. I think what I was remembering was that we always land at the south pole, but we actually need to get the quantum shrine onto the north pole. I think that's what happens. So we're going to keep the scout launcher on the south pole. And we're going to go to the North Pole. Oh, hang on. I think I'm remembering that the North Pole is kind of hard to get to. Uh, where the hell am I? Right, Quantum Shrine is there. Right, if I'm remembering correctly, the North Pole is hard to get to. Okay, is that just an endless wall of can't go that way or what? Oh, do you see that? Oh shit. It just took me back to the South Pole because every time you land on the quantum moon, you go back to the South Pole. Okay. Ah, <sighs> okay. Shit. Well, our, now that we've relanded, our ship is gone and lives on only in the memory of our photo mode, which is hilarious. Um... How weird, how insane is it that the, it looks like the quantum moon when it's orbiting uh, Brittle Hollow mimics that same sort of hourglass effect. Um, I think the gist that I'm getting here is it's not fucking easy to get to the North Pole. On the giant steep version, there's the giant tornado. This one has the giant mountain, which means one of these planets will allow us to get to the North Pole. Uh, I think it's safe for me to get my scout thing back now. Which one's this? This is Dark Bramble. Okay, let's try Dark Bramble's moon. All right, North Pole. So you get the quantum shrine to appear at the North Pole. Can we do it in Dark Bramble? And we've got no choice but to figure this out now because our ship is gone. Ooh, we're almost at the... right on it. Damn, okay, this is all... Alright, we're close to it. We are basically circling it. I'm going to say no. Okay. Um, now I need to find the quantum shrine again. Ooh. Thank you. Uh, which leaves Timber Hearth and Brittle Hollow. Okay. So now we'll check whichever one it lands on next out of those two. All right, Brittle Hollow. I'm gonna check the North Pole, see if we can get to it from here. That is not looking good again. Oh, hang on, hang on. Oh, that's so close. Um, oh, we're running out of fuel. Okay. I wonder if this is... Do you think this is close enough? Or do you think 
it's not going to work. Can we get the Quantum Shrine to appear there? Salonim's ship can appear there, so... The Shrine can appear here. Does this count as being on the North Pole? It's kind of not on the North Pole, so I don't know if this counts. Um, I guess we could try. Damn it. God damn it! Okay. Doesn't count. Um... Me, okay. Um... This is so close to the, to the North Pole. Oh, but you know what? With the shrine being here, what's really good about this is I guess we can kind of, because this shrine is close to the North Pole. Maybe we have to, actually, that's a thought. Maybe because this is kind of like one of the spots where it's like as close as we can get to the North Pole is you need to keep moving the shrine to different planets and it gets the shrine gets closer and closer as you move through to get to the North Pole. Maybe? I don't... This one's not going to work because that's the giant tornado. Uh, Timber Hearth. That's this one. This is a geyser. I want to keep the shrine here. You stay here. Um, can we get to the north? Oh, shit. Hang on. Dude, we're on... Okay. Hang on. We're on the North Pole. Oh, fuck. Okay, it might be Timber Hearth then. All right. Let's remove that shrine. Let's get the shrine to appear. <gasps> okay, Timber Hearth. Timber Hearth was the key all along. All right, we're on the North Pole. Yes, yeah, so you can use... Maybe, we, maybe Timber Hearth was just the one that you could just walk to the North Pole then. And... I just did some unnecessary steps. Uh, fucking... Time to find out. It worked. Oh, sh oh shit, I put away my photo. Surely it can appear here again. Um, it worked. Oh fuck, what do we do now? <laughs> We're orbiting the sixth location, right? Okay, the shrine can appear back there, which is, that's nice. Looks like we're just walking straight to the south pole. I don't have a ship though. Do I have to, do I have to use Solanum's ship somehow? What the fuck? What the fuck? What the... F Whoa! No fucking way? Okay. Pause, because I don't know how much time I've got left on this time loop and I'm kind of scared that we're going to fucking die. Solanum is alive. This is a, a living Namai. So Solanum was dead. On every other version of the quantum moon, just a body left over. He is standing right in front of me. Okay. What in the world? What the fuck? All right. What do you have to say? Actually, you know what? Actually... You know what? 
I need a quick. I need to. I need to freeze time while talking to you. I need to. Oh shit! I wanted to. Oh fuck! I wanted to talk to you. Hang on. Can I please tell me I can still talk to you after backing out of that conversation? Oh no! I've messed up. I can't talk to him. Oh. I'm such an idiot. I thought I'd still be able to talk to him. I just was like wanted to pause time because I'm so stressed all the time. Oh. He was just speaking in dots though. I think there might be a language barrier here. So I might not have missed anything, but he's pointing out. No, the music started. You see what I fucking mean? Pick up the explain stone. Already holding explain stone. Oh God, what the fuck? Where do I, where do I put the stones, man? Do I give you the stone? There's a hole there. Where do, where do I put the... No! I made it here and I'm now in time. No! Where do I fucking put this stone? Tell me. Tell me. I hate language barriers. Oh, you put them on here. Oh, fuck me. Oh, we, okay, so he can't... Dude! Okay, that's fine. This is so exciting. I'm losing my shit right now. Okay, so it's a good... It's fine that we skip the dialogue because he actually can't speak to us. But we put down... He gives us symbols. We put them down. Hey, can you explain this? And then he gives us writing. I'm so annoyed that we're about to experience the end of this time loop right now, but let's try and see what we can get. Explain the eye of the universe to me, please. There is fundamental uncertainty throughout the universe. Normally, this uncertainty is only... Uh, and the time doesn't pause when you're where time doesn't pause when this music is playing, which pisses me off. God damn it. There is fundamental uncertainty throughout the universe. Normally, this uncertainty is only observable on a very small scale as one approaches the eye. However, that uncertainty grows enormously. Uh, the quantum moon probably exhibits uh, macroscopic quantum behavior because of its proximity to the eye. Shards that broke off from the quantum moon have a similar effect, as I imagine you've seen elsewhere in the star system. Conscious observation forces a quantum object to collapse to a single possibility, but what would happen if a conscious observer somehow entered the eye itself over time? This has become my clan's greatest question. <sighs> I guess that's all the time that we have today, Solanum, because I'm about to get wiped off the face of the earth. <laughs> Pain! Alright, we have to come we have to go back. We know how to do it now. Oh my god, we've done it though. We've cracked the quantum moon and we've there is a living breathing Namai in front of us with a language barrier, but we actually get to see how they communicate and how they leave that text behind. This is one of my favorite loops yet. The fact that we made it to the sun station, made it off of the sun station, figured out the quantum moon and discovered Solanum is like, holy shit. <laughs> it's just like fucking everything, you know? That is insane. All right, we're going right back to the quantum boot. We have to do this immediately uh, so we can make the most of our time. Um, and that way we can read all that text and freeze time without the Namai, uh, without the music playing and um, without running out of time, okay? Holy shit. Uh, where is the quantum moon? I need it. There it is, okay. Wow. I, I cannot, cannot believe it. I cannot believe it. So Solanum exists. Solanum lives somehow, but only when it's orbiting the eye of the universe. So there's some, the eye of the universe has some weird time fuckery with it that allows it to, uh, that allows, I guess, time to be weird, you know, because it's the quantum moon. It's fucking strange. Now, we're on here. I, I guess, you know, at, the, at, this, at this point in time, when you reach this, uh, this part of the game, you're probably approaching that end point where you don't need your ship anymore. Maybe there's a way out from the eye of the universe, but holy crap. All right, let's do this. So if we can get it to go to at least to Timber Hearth, I think, we can, we should be able to make it to the North Pole.
So I think Timber Hearth is the one that we can make it to the North Pole on. And then um, from there. Oh, actually, hold on. Oh, I think we actually, that means we did it right the first time. Holy shit. Okay, hang on. So uh, we can't get to that from here. So I was actually onto something. So you need to use planets to navigate closer to the North Pole before you actually get onto it. I think Brittle Hollow is the one. Brittle Hollow allows us to get to this like patch that's like super close. And then from Timber Hearth, we can walk up to the top. Yeah, so this patch, he okay. This patch here, then we get the shrine. And we shut the door. Then we go to Timber Hearth. Then we go to the North Pole. Then we're at the Quantum Moon, and then we can get our answers. Oh, this is so stressful and so exciting but we've got so much time loop ahead of us now so this is good we got so much time i was panicking that all my critical thinking went out the window and it's like well, how the fuck do we talk to this guy <laughs> uh, but I, he makes it so easy for us like look i will explain everything that you need to all right um six location please thank you so the quantum moon is now orbiting the eye of the universe. As far as I'm aware. We need to quickly go down to the south pole. And we will do that much faster than we did last time. Whee! Please don't go into orbit. I'm scared. Ugh. Don't be careless now. I can't. I cannot believe this. This is insane. Okay. Now I'll talk. Uh, who are you? Nothing. Doesn't know. There we go. Okay. I didn't miss anything from the dialogue. That's good. Holy fuck. Okay, so Quantum Moon, me, I the universe, you. Okay. Let's uh let's go let's stay stick on I of the universe. Wait, where'd it go? Why can't I put it oh. Oh you have to okay, you okay. <laughs> uh identify. Okay, let's do identify because we did explain before. Identify the I of the universe. We are orbiting the eye of the universe now, although we cannot see it, only the quantum moon's reflection of it. The eye is older than the universe itself, and my clan believes it dwells in an extremely distant orbit around this star system. Okay. <laughs> Why did it go in there like that? Get in there. All right, let's just do explain again. So we can only see the... Uh, ref Jesus. All right. Uh, yep, so macroscopic quantum behavior because of its proximity to the eye. Shards that broke off from the quantum moon have a similar effect. Conscious observation forces a quantum object to collapse to a single possibility, but what would happen if a conscious observer somehow entered the eye itself? Over time, this has become my clan's greatest question. Is that it up there? Can I just fucking zoom up in my jetpack and go in there? I guess we can fuck around and find out. All right. Uh... This back. All right. You identify yourself, Solanum. Oh, this is so cool. What the fuck, dude? I am Solanum, a Namai. My clan arrived in this star system before my birth, and we now call it home. Okay. We're just going to go through all the identify ones first. Let's do that. Identify the quantum moon. Oh, man. I can't believe what I'm seeing right now. This is the quantum moon where we are both standing. Despite also orbiting other celestial bodies, the quantum moon is the eye of the universe's moon. Okay. The eye of the universe's moon. Identify me. Who am I? I've, m I've never met one of your kind before. It's an honor to speak with you. I particularly admire your four eyes. There are many questions I would ask if I could comprehend your language. You have my gratitude for understanding mine. Ah, that's so good, because we have a translator. 
Uh, I, f I hope that we could get that to work one day. All right, let's get rid of the identify stone. Um, explain yourself. Explain you. I am on my first pilgrimage to the quantum moon. All Namai and my clan make this journey when we come of age. Even though the eye cannot be reached from here, the quantum moon remains special to us as it carries us nearer to the eye than any other place we know. I've journeyed here to be close to the eye. While the eye is obscured from our sight, we can see the quantum moon's reflection of the eye in the sky above us. Um, fuck, it would be so nice if we had a ship and then we'd be like, let's just get out of here, Solanum. And <laughs> help me figure this shit out. All right, uh, explain the quantum moon to me. And then explain me. Yes. And then what do we do? Have you encountered a quantum shard on another planet? The shards look the same as the quantum moon surface does now while at the eye. From this, we can reasonably infer the quantum moon's natural state is as we see it now and that the eye is its primary location. Given the quantum moon is the eye's moon, it's likely that any characteristics the moon exhibits are also exhibited by the eye itself. The quantum moon and its shards, for instance, are quantum, thus the eye is likely also quantum. In fact, this moon is probably quantum because its proximity to the eye made it quantum, that way, the same way the area surrounding quantum shards that landed on other planets eventually become quantum too, which makes a lot of sense. Cool. Okay. Aha, explain me, baby. I imagine your purpose here is the same as mine, to learn about and to find the eye of the universe. I'm unsure how you arrived here, however. Perhaps you came from another star system, as my clan originally did. No, I was I used to be a fish. I did used to be a fish. Um, okay. What do we do now? What do we do now? I'm gonna take a photo of you. Um Solanum, what do we do now? Because I guess I could just leave, right? But also, why would you want to leave once you get to this point? Oh, this is crazy. Is there a frequency about you? No. What else can we what else can we do here, you know what I mean? Can I just zoom myself up into the eye itself and see what happens. A total fuck around and find out moment? Or am I supposed to just go back to the quantum shrine and leave even though I don't have a ship? Alright, Solanum, it's been real. Oh, actually, hang on. Is there a slot for a... No. Try to see if there was more. What if I do, like two of these. Does this work? Oh, no shit. These work. Okay, hang on. Ah! Like many of my clan before me, I journeyed here to see the quantum moon's reflection of the eye. Yeah, holy shit. Okay, there's more. Okay, we can mix these stones together. Like many of my clan before me, I journeyed here to see the quantum moon's reflection of the eye. This is closest any of us have come to seeing the eye itself. You may think I'm strange, but I have a hypothesis that I may not be entirely alive. Perhaps my journey has reached its end. I would, uh, I would dare say you are right in that one. So now if I do quantum, um, and me. Okay, so we can pair all of these together. We can have a good old time together. Is this your first time on the quantum moon? It's my first time here. If you've come here looking for answers, I hope you find them. Yeah, dude. Trust me, I'm trying. The good thing that the fucking ship log exists. I imagine you've noticed the quantum moon changes in appearance depending on which location it is currently orbiting. For instance, the moon looks quite different when orbiting Giant Steep than it does when orbiting the Outer Glass Twins. Because the quantum moon clearly changes in its different forms, the eye, being this moon's primary location, must be similarly malleable, which makes sense. From this, we can hypothesize that the eye represents extreme changeability. Uh, that said, despite its malleable nature, the quantum moon becomes locked to one specific version of itself when it is consciously observed. But what would happen if a conscious observer were to enter the eye? <sighs> so... Like... 
how can we, oh, can I shoot my fucking scout launcher? Can I shoot my scout launcher through? That might be what we can do. Let's try that. Um, okay, let's remove the quantum moonstone and then we can have you and the eye of the universe. We'll do that as well. Many in my clan have believed the eye called to us for a particular purpose. When I was a child, I used to believe the eye was malevolent to have lured my clan to this star system only to then vanish from them so completely. But I don't fear the eye anymore. In fact, it has become my fondest hope to see the eye itself someday, but I fear this may be beyond my reach. You may think I'm strange, but I have a hypothesis that I may not be entirely alive. Yep. Okay. Uh, which one was I doing again? fucking can't remember anymore. I've done so many of these, I can't fucking remember. We do not have much connection, you and I. Still, this encounter feels special. I hope you won't mind if I think of you as a friend. That's awesome. Alright, um... Did I do you with both of these? I think I did. Now it's time to do me with all of these. But yeah. Me in the eye of the universe. Suppose you could reach the eye of the universe, would you try to enter it? What do you imagine the efforts of a conscious observer might be? The effects of a conscious observer. Uh, we're gonna fucking find out, dude. I'm gonna shoot my scout launcher up there, see what happens. Oh, I've already done me in the quantum moon, apparently. Okay. I think we've done all of them now. Alright. Oh my god, it worked. It went in. Emergency scout recall activated. Fuck you. Look at it go in there. Oh, fuck you. I thought I was being clever. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to put this here. Um. Keep a close eye on that. I'm going. Sends me right back. Oh, because we always land at the South Pole. Right. Mm. Mm. Okay, hang on a minute. What if we go North Pole? I guess Solanum ship. Uh, we'll never be on here. Oh. This is weird. Okay. Damn, dude. What do we do? Oh. Hmm. How can we consciously observe the eye from here? Hold on to that for me. Um, oh, oh shit, actually. What if it, the photo is just looking at it the whole time? Damn it. Mm. Solana. Solana, what do we do? What do we do at this point in time, man? Fuck. Hmm. Well, this has been riveting. I guess I have to return home now, even though I can't, so... Whoa! What the fuck? Oh shit, is this because I didn't have the signal scope out that going in there... Did we just get yeeted? Oh, dude. No. Oh, God. Where the, f where the fuck? There's my ship. Why am I here? What the fuck? 
Okay, there's the quantum moon. Okay. <laughs> My ship! <laughs> I could make 11 kilometers with all of, with the fuel that I have left? Fucking hell. Okay. Um, well, there you go. Um, we, uh, we made it to uh, the eye of the universe. We made it to Solanum. And our, sh and our ship actually does uh, just end up floating in space somewhere. Uh, there it is. Orbiting the sun. There it is. Look at it go. Just in orbit. <laughs> it's orbiting the sun now. Okay. Uh, we're gonna restart there. We're gonna, we're gonna meditate until the next loop. Uh, that was, that was fantastic. That was, that was something else. Uh, we're gonna check the ship log now and see what has just, uh, opened up for us. Okay. Let's have a look. This is a massive episode, so we've gotten some really good information from Solana about everything that's going on there, and I guess we'll find out if it says there's more to explore here. But there's some time fuckery there, because Solana is there, but also dead. Okay. Ship log. Let's have a look. Quantum Grove. Six location. Yeah. There's a strange rock shard in the grove that moves when I'm not watching. Yep. And then six location. So, I met a living demine named Solanum at the South Pole. Quantum Moon is the eye of the universe's moon. At this location, the quantum moon becomes a reflection of the eye itself. It is likely the source of all macroscopic quantum phenomena in the solar system. What would happen if a conscious observer were to enter the eye and he has a hypothesis that, oh, sorry, she may not be entirely alive. Solanum is a she, forgive me. Um, Solanum is a she, there you go. Uh, Cause I know that the uh, the Harthians are like gender, gender neutral. They're referred to as, as they, and I've kind of mixed that up a couple of times cause it's always a process of learning and adjusting to new people. But the Namai are gendered. Um, but there you go, Solanum is a she, so far out. Um, there is still the lake bed cave, so I guess we'll go to the lake bed cave, uh, which is tied to the, the purple part of this, so uh, we can go back to um, in between's North Pole um, and get that last one. So now the last one in there, in the purple group of the, of the ship log. So let's go and check that out. Oh, this is new. Okay, hold on. Ooh, we have something new here. Let's park. Uh, excellent parking. There we go. Okay. Let's have a look. Have a looky here. All right, we're on the South Pole, which is the opposite of where I want to be. I want to be on the North Pole, because that's where the lake bed cave is. However, um, oh, okay, so we can see the quantum moon. I mean, there it is. <laughs> there it is. Uh, it do be tracking the quantum moon. That's cool. And then if we look away, that'll, yeah, that's really neat, actually. Okay, so there's a quantum moon tracker. On Ash Twin, we got some words here for us to read. This planet sometimes, and only sometimes, has a moon. This is also of note, it disappears if no one is watching it. Isn't that a fascinating orbital characteristic? This is my first time encountering a natural satellite with the ability to vanish when not being watched. We should study it, or even better, we should travel there. I agree. Our first step would be determining a method to track this phantom moon so that we can always know where it is. It's really interesting to discover some of this text, like much later on when you're already aware of so many of these things and also that they're aware of it and then you're reading their earlier texts being like man maybe we should travel to it and to the point where you actually see sort of like the the history and timeline of the namai going from wow there's a moon here to yeah our people make it the pilgrimage here you know what i mean like it's such like a a shift in their um in their culture Given its reluctance to move while consciously observed, it might be a form of macroscopic quantum mechanics. 
I found your note, Melari. Kindly count me among this moon's admirers. What is happening when it disappears? I doubt it ceases to exist. Does it move to another location? I believe so. Not only does the moon appear around Brutal Hollow, I can confirm sometimes orbits Timber Hearth as well. That's awesome. Probably a long overdue... Oh, hello. Long overdue... Um, ship log update. Chert's research notes. Property of Chert. Clearly the Namai were making astronomical observations here. They they chose an excellent spot. What is this big rotating device for? What was it the Namai were observing? I'd posit there's something special about the orange symbol on that device. How and the new astronauts translator tool would be nice to have handy about now. Alright, pick up the screw. We should talk to Chert some more as well. I'll check in with him after we read this. The quantum moon locator is functioning. We have markers for each of the places the moon goes. Anona, Burr, and uh, Anona, Burr, I just observed the quantum moon in orbit around Dark Bramble. I added a marker for Dark Bramble. I thought the locator now accounted for all of the Phantom Moon's locations, but sometimes the locator can't tell where the moon is. Perhaps there's a problem with the device, or maybe a sixth location. It's also possible there exists a sixth place in this star system to which the Phantom Moon travels. You have keen eyes, my friend, so this moon travels to a total of five locations, not four. Potentially six. Okay, awesome. So this is an outdated... And, and this is another thing, this is outdated because it only accounts for five locations. And there will be a point where they're like, oh, it's somewhere else. Cool, okay. So that's another thing that we've discovered. Um, let's look for... Let's go look for Church. Looks like he might be on the other side, which is where we need to kind of be anyway. Nice. Good. Good landing. Okay. Let's head to Church. Have a chat to him and then try and find the lake bed cave, which might be down this way. Alright. How can I land here that's not going to be ridiculous? Perfect. Okay. Just checking that my ship's actually going to stay there. Goodness, it's you. Hello. I take it your first launch went well. Welcome to the Hourglass Twins. I've been here before, Chad. We've spoken. I have a question for you. Tell me, what can I do for you? Uh, I found something. Nice. Okay. Um, I guess, I think we've already spoken about to him about Outer Rock's main crater. Frozen solid, partially made of ice, like a much colder giant's deep. It's hard to say. It used to be the fifth planet in our solar system. You'll notice, of course, there is no such planet in Stark Ramble. I believe that we did that, and then uh, I found the my writing about a hidden planet. How fascinating! It might interest you to know the existence of an additional planet is entirely plausible if you look at the physics of our solar system. It would just have to be incredibly far out there, further than Harthian ships would be able to travel. God damn it! And honestly, we don't know all that much about what's out there. The farther you go, the less we know. As such, it's well within the realm of possibility such a planet exists. How the hell are we going to be able to consciously observe the eye? We've gotten, we've literally orbited the, the location. However, we can only see a reflection of the eye. How do we do it? I need to figure it out. Um, I found in my writing about the quantum moon. Oh yes, everybody loves a good mystery, don't they? Who wouldn't wonder about a moon that's sometimes there and sometimes not? I've observed the quantum moon orbiting each of the five planets, but sometimes it quite simply disappears from the sky altogether. Maybe there's another place it travels to. Unfortunately, if there is, I've never seen it. Perhaps if I take a closer look at these star charts. How do I know if I've spotted a supernova? Uh, bright stars to the naked eye. If you zoom in, you can tell they're actually enormous explosions. Massive stars go supernova at the very end of their lifespans, which is why it's so unusual to see two in a single day. I wonder if some of these stars are older than we realized. It's like we're at the end of the universe. You know what I mean? 
because we're spotting so many there's obviously so many star systems that are all exploding all around us we've just learned that our star is reaching the end of its natural cycle like are we just at the end of the universe is it that bleak <laughs> is it that bleak He hasn't left the lake bed, don't mean to brag, I'm quite good with a little scout, taking pictures from right here on the campsite. Um, this is talking about the Namai crash site, which is where the we have the escape pod. On a scale of 1 to dead, I'd give it a 7 or 8. Awfully pretty though. Right now the sand is flowing from Ash Twin to Ember Twin, but did you know the process eventually reverses? We're not completely sure why the sand flows back and forth between the twins, but it seems to be a natural phenomena. Wait a minute, what? If you'd like to see something interesting, check out the other twin once a little more of its sand drains off. I promise you won't be disappointed. It reverses. But it doesn't, because by the time that all the sand is drained, uh, the sun blows up. Right? Is Chert experiencing the time loop as well, but doesn't know it? Because he just, like wakes up and then goes, oh, the the other, the Ash Twin now has all its sand again? I'm not completely sure it, sent, it flows back and forth, but it seems to be a natural phenomena. The process eventually reverses. Am I... Am I crazy or am I onto something there? Is he not realizing that he's stuck in a time loop, but he's actually aware of it? I mean, so he's actually in it, but he's just not aware of it. Unlike, you know, me and Gabro, which are aware of it. Uh, I don't know. All I know is there's a lake bed cave down here. And I'm just gonna fucking... Yep. Oh, it might be too late. Uh, it might be too late with all the sand. Because this is kind of, yeah, this is closer to the surface than a lake bed cave would be. We are on the North Pole, unless we just have to find, um, unless we just have to go through to the bottom, which means it might be worth us um, almost restarting the, the time loop, even though we're kind of early on in the time loop. Let's try to go through over here. Where does this go? I'm not sure if we've been in this spe uh, specific cave. Actually, we have crossed this bridge before, I think. Because now we're just going to the South Pole. Hmm. Hmm. Oh yes, so this is the Quantum Shard that we saw, and it does go to... Uh, the lake bed cave. He vanished from the lake bed cave. This, the one at the bottom of the dry lake bed at the North Pole. Several days ago, we were unable to find any trace of him. I don't know how much air he had when he disappeared. Help us recover him. And uh, we've spoken about this, and this is the one that we put. Maybe our friendly rock will meet us down there. Sometimes it's there, and sometimes it isn't. It'd be nice if I could get onto the lake bed cave myself. By just standing on the quantum shard and then looking away from it, but it's not how it works, unfortunately. All right, I might restart the the loop because of the fact that this planet's constantly filling up with sand. We might have missed our opportunity to um, get all the way down to the bottom. And with that, what I guess I'll do is check out the experiment at the high energy lab as well and go back to the uh, the sunless city.
So let's let's see if we can go to the high energy lab now before we meditate. Just to see if we can recreate the experiment from here at this point in time. And then if not, we'll uh, we'll restart. I need to remember where the high energy lab actually is though. Because uh, it's been a little while. Um, which one actually is it? This is the high energy lab, isn't it? I believe. Here it is the spot. Uh, it's shut from this side. God damn it. You have to get there. Oh, how do we get in there again? God damn it. Hang on. Do we have to get there from the Sunless City? Because that is incredibly upsetting. Definitely, for, right, I've forgotten how to get in here. I guess we're going this way. And we're not, because there's a ghost matter. This way. Retracing the steps somewhere that you've gone previously and not remembering is actually kind of sucky. I'm like, oh man, I can't just walk into the high energy lab, I have to go on a journey. Now, depending on how much time that we have, uh, I believe that we should be able to get to the Sunless City from here, and then from the Sunless City, I think if we... Oh. Uh, fucking never mind then? Jesus. Okay, that's the, this is the first time that I've gone through this door, and I... Th okay. Uh, surely not, right? Can I... What?! No! I put my entire fucking heart and soul into trying to figure out how to get to the goddamn Sunless City faster. I thought this was our lovely shortcut to that location. Oh. Okay. Um. Never mind. I hate this cacti bullshit. <laughs> I think at this point there's too much there's gonna to be too much sand, so I'm just gonna meditate. Right at the fucking top of this gravity cannon is a fucking door. Well, not a door but an entrance and then a door. Right above Oh god, where am I? I think this is above that door that's supposed to be the shortcut to the Sunless City. So I think that that door is like a hint. It's like, haha, you can't go through here because it's blocked. But, yeah. We can actually... Still get to the Sunless City. From here. There you go, that's nice. Right. I'm glad I decided to have another poke around here and be like, nah, surely. It's gonna be a shortcut. Okay, um, high energy lab is at the bottom, right? Oh god. Hail myself. Um, yes. Okay, 400 meters. So, right at the bottom, because I remember us jumping down to the very bottom for the high energy lab. And then you have to navigate the, the cave of wonders. Barely see in. And then at some point, this will reach dead end, and I think it's there. No, soon. Oh, okay. Never mind. Um, hang on. 
Oh. Just let me in. Okay. Um. Do I just have to... I, how did I do this? <laughs> I need to... I need to rewatch my video. How did I do this the first time? Did I make it... Did I brute force my way in? Or do I just have to wait for the sand to... Yeah. I might just have to wait. Maybe I'm here too early and I'm just wasting fuel, which is kind of... Making me just want to go back to my ship at this point. All right, fuck it. I'll wait for the I'll wait for the sand to cover up the cacti without using my fuel and just using my oxygen. Okay. Um, now we have to make the experiment happen, right? So we're here, and then we got a black hole warp core, and a white hole warp core is needed. Ooh. Made some noise, right? Um, and we need to take power away from the Sunless City, so it's going to the Sunless City. I think we have to take power and put it to that, so that is now working. Now, from what we read, this is, this is the one that talks about the negative amount of time entering a black hole and exiting the white hole at its destination. First, pair a small black hole core with a small white hole core to mimic the setup on the white hole station. It's possible for an object to exit a white hole before entering the corresponding black hole. And they were talking about the the 22 minute delay, which I think is on this scroll. Our experiment here reproduced the anomaly in arrival and departure times, I'm convinced. Adding more energy. The Sunless City's energy supply should prove sufficient. So let him know before we reroute energy. All available energy has been rerouted. I saw Pi, I saw it, Pi saw it, hypothesis confirmed. It was beyond extraordinary. What a beautiful day. Okay. Oh, okay, maybe that's not the 22 minute one. We read that somewhere else. But if that's there, the power goes here. So we've got the power from the Sunless City. We've got black hole and a white hole core. Uh, we then can do this, I suppose. Whoa. Okay, hang on a minute. Oh. Okay, so we do the experiment with our scout. Oh, that's... That's wild. Huh. Wow. Well, I mean, that, that proves it, obviously, because, I mean, what else, what other proofs do you need? You can see that it goes into the black hole and it comes out of the white hole. So when we get, uh, I, I believe with the white hole station and the black hole scenario, when we go through it, we are in two places at once. Is there um, anything that happens if you do like two of the same core? No, it doesn't appear. So it only works if it's a black hole and a white hole. Nice, and then it makes it appear. Okay, nice, we got to do the experiment. Awesome. That's what that is. So basically that's just, yeah, literally confirming that theory. Um, so now we get to actually see that. And then they've tried to do something in which that they've caused like a 22 minute delay, I believe, with the, with a heap of energy, which I believe is the Ash Twin Project. That's what I think. Um, and also our time loop is on 22 minutes. So it feels connected in that way because how could it not be I think this is the 22 minute scroll yeah creating a 22 minute interval is possible something arrived 22 minutes before it's sent through the warp we've learned the negative interval between departure and arrival by adding more energy to the warp core problematically the energy required increases at an exponential rate a 22 minute long interval is possible but we're currently unable to generate the necessary energy Invent a new method of producing energy, which I think might be the Ash Twin Project. A thrilling but enormous undertaking. 
an enormous space. The only location would be like, yeah, so the Ash Twin Project. The Ash, the Ash Twin Project is the energy source that is creating the 22 minute interval. It has to be. We have to get into that fucking room. Somehow, because they're saying things can go wrong if there's if there's even like a breakage in the room. I think biggest undertakings yet to build it. We needed to be a way to travel quickly between Ash Twin each location that holds the crucial project materials. And this is when we learned about the warp towers. So each one warps to a different planet. So they you go to a tower, you warp to a planet, you get your materials, you come back here, and that's how they built the Ash Twin project. What do we do? <laughs> what do we do now? Okay, let's uh, let's get out of here. Um, now that we've done that experiment, let's go back to our ship. Uh, where is our ship? 290 meters down this way. Now that we've recreated that experiment, maybe we can talk to Chert about that as well. We've got a symbol of the eye here. Interesting. What is going on there? Is that a window that looks outward? I'm not sure what's there. Symbol of the eye. Let's head back into our ship. Let's check the ship log. Okay, nice. Quantum moon locator has been added to that. That's cool. So we got another one in there. Um. This fucking thing. So, the central chamber inside Ash Twin was physically sealed off by an immensely thick protective shell. They plan to construct technology capable of producing a 22 minute negative time interval on Ash Twin. An advanced warp core was approved for installation in the central chamber of Ash Twin. Big mystery. Okay, Ash Twin Towers, there's more to explore here. The Sun Station. Uh, we've done, which is good. Our sun has reached the end of its natural life cycle. So the Sunless City and the Ash Twin Towers, there's more to explore. I assume that there's going to be uh, stuff to explore on the, these other towers as well. Maybe let's, uh, while we're here on Ash Twin, could be a good idea for us to actually check out the... Um, the Ash Twin Towers, because it says that there's more to explore here. Alright, which one is that? It's the one that has two towers. There it is. Now, I don't think we've been in the other towers yet, but... I'm going to park our ship here, because I think that will be just out of reach of the <laughs> sand. So the ship doesn't get sucked up onto in-between. Load up to the top here because of the lovely gravity. Alright, let's check this out. So, we have a Namai body here. The tower is right here. I'm assuming it'll just warp us to the other planet. It'll just warp us over there. So, we won't stand in it. Ooh, there's a scroll though. I need to be careful about where I'm standing right now, too, otherwise I'll get sucked up. Oh, that's annoying. My ship is just on the now. Just on the edge. Is there a scroll up here for me? You. I don't think they ever put the scrolls too far away for you to find it, which is very nice of them. So that would be annoying otherwise. Hey, be careful not to stand on there just in case. Scroll! Information. 
friends visiting from the Hanging City, we are planning the Ash Twin project at the High Energy Lab on Ember Twin's equator. I became lost on Ember Twin, my gratitude that Raimi found me, but the High Energy Lab is the building with the large solar panels. I'm surprised I didn't see it. I imagine our otherwise immensely clever uh, Konoi would lose his own head if it weren't anatomically possible. Okay. So... The Ash Twin Project, they're planning it, the High Energy Lab, yes. Which we kind of already put together, which is fine. Um, was that all that was there to discover here? I wonder. Oh, right. Hang on. Oh, no! <laughs> Our ship got taken to... In between, anyway. I know. Why do I even bother? Ow! My head! I really thought I... I really thought I might have been able to make it in there. <laughs> I got so close to being able to make it in that tower, that's funny. Goddamn ship getting taken to the... other side. I tried. It's really sad when you're just seeing so many of the bodies of the Namai constantly being like, this is, these are the people that we're like reading about all the time, you know? Okay, this is the giant steep one. Really hurting myself <laughs> to do this. Alright, we're gonna go into this one. We're just gonna check if there's stuff in each tower. Uh, uh. Ah, aha. God, my, that was very dizzying. Here's our first delivery. Arrow, one warp core, fresh from the Black Hole Forge. Root is installing this core's simpling on Brittle Hollow as I write this. My gratitude, Clary. With this, the Ash Twin project is underway. I confess, I'm deeply curious about what you and Poke found on the White Hole Station that started this project, because I visit this time to learn more. I recommend you do. The White Hole Station is the model for the towers being built for the Ash Twin project, so a visit, a visit to the station would be doubly useful. I suppose more precisely, I would like you to visit the, the White Hole Station with you, Clary. I'd be happy to explain our findings. Yarrow, stop using this scroll wall to flirt with my sister. In romantic matters, her density rivals a neutron stars and go meet her on the White Hole Station. I wish I could wait here for you to arrive, but the forge, my unfinished work there is calling. I'll return with more materials soon. Nice. Okay. That's funny. My ship. I'm just going to go in each of the towers just to see what information we can find. This will take us to Timber Hearth. Okay, is there anything more? Oh god, that is not glass. Didn't think, expect us to just go through there. Alright, I guess I should probably go back to my ship then. My fuel level is critical. Have I done a full lap around the towers? I think I have, because we're now back here. Okay. We're pretty close to uh, the end of everything. Again. So I think we're just going to wait for uh, in between to come around to take us up through the... on the 7 or 8 of a death scale, see if we can make it back there to our, sh to our ship. Um... Actually, fuck it. Let me try and see if we can be smart about it and use the tower, uh, the warp tower instead. Hang on. <laughs> Let's stand above it. Instead of risking the, the sand. And so let's see where we end up. Now my 
ship is within reach. That was definitely the smarter and less stupid way. And we should hopefully be able to just walk back to our ship without running out of oxygen, I hope. <laughs> uh, and then I think, as we are approaching the end of this time loop and with the sheer amount of discoveries we've made this episode, uh, we're going to bring this episode of Outer Wilds to a close as we desperately go back to our ship using oxygen as propellant. Hopefully we can make it. There we go. All right. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Outer Wilds. Being able to uh, complete the sun station and find out some pretty crucial information that uh, it's not actually the sun station uh, destroying uh, the solar system. We're we're in the natural end. Oh God. We're in the natural end of the life cycle of our solar system, apparently. Uh, and we also were able to uh, solve the uh, mystery of the solve the mystery of the quantum moon. We almost just flew ourselves into the sun, like reversing into it. Uh, which is pretty amazing. There's some good, great discoveries. I think next time, something that I would like to to look at um, is going back to the going back to the uh, outer rock and checking some more of that out, which would be nice. Um, I think it would be good to also do more of Dark Bramble potentially. Uh, there is now no longer more to find at the Ash Twin Towers, uh, but there is still more to do at the at the Sunless City. But we're still piecing together things, figuring things out, and it's uh, and it's a, it's a lot of fun to do so. So we'll we'll see how I how I feel next episode about what we discover and uh, and what we check out. Uh, but thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it, and I will see you next time for episode ten.